While your cerebral cortex is consciously active, other centers of your cerebrum, diencephalon and brainstem, are processing sensory information and issuing motor commands at a subconscious level. This is typically directed by basal nuclei, also known as cerebral nuclei, pictured here. The basal nuclei are masses of gray matter beneath lateral ventricles and within white matter of the cerebral hemisphere. The caudate nucleus, which looks like a great big C here in the lateral view, is a massive head and a very slender curving tail. The head lies just anterior to the lentiform nucleus, which contains the medial globulum pallidus and the lateral putinum. Inferior to the caudate and lentiform nuclei is the amygdaloid body or the amygdala. Dala. It is a component of the limbic system. The limbic system includes the olfactory cortex, basal nuclei, gyri, and tracts between the cerebrum and the diencephalon. This is really more of a functional grouping than an anatomical one. The limbic system establishes the emotional states, and it links the conscious with the unconscious. Um, the limbic system also aids in long-term memory with help from the hippocampus. The diencephalon contains switching and relay centers that integrate conscious and unconscious sensory information and motor commands. It surrounds the third ventricle, and it consists of three components. The epithalamus, which lies superior to the third ventricle and forms the roof of the diencephalon, is the anterior part, which contains the choroid plexus. The posterior part contains the pineal gland, that is an endocrine gland, and it secretes melatonin. The left and the right thalamus are separated by the third ventricle. This is the final relay point for sensory information. Only a small part of this input is actually sent on to the primary sensory cortex. So it's responsible for weeding out a lot of that information. The hypothalamus lies inferior to the third ventricle. The subconscious control of skeletal muscle contractions is associated with strong emotion. And it coordinates the nervous and endocrine systems by secreting hormones, producing sensations of thirst and hunger, and coordinating voluntary and ANS function. It regulates body temperature and even coordinates your daily cycles. This is a nice view of the choroid plexus. You can see that red ribbon right at the top. You can also see the right and the left thalamus pictured here and the pineal gland. This figure also shows the structure of the midbrain very well. You can see there's two pairs of nuclei involved in visual and auditory processing, the superior and inferior colliculi. Note the cerebral peduncles, which are tracts that link the cerebral cortex, basal nuclei, and the brainstem. This is another view of the midbrain, and it contains um, with views of the motor nuclei for the cranial nerves 3 and 4. The cerebral peduncles contain descending fibers noted here. And though they're not shown very well, the midbrain also has reticular formations, which is a network of nuclei related to the state of wakefulness and the substantia nigra, which influence muscle tone. <clears throat> this is a great figure to show the pons, which is the large blue section right in the middle. And this links the cerebellum with the midbrain, diencephalon, cerebrum, and the spinal cord. It contains sensory and motor nuclei for cranial nerves 5, 6, 7, and 8. Just inferior to the pons, the medulla oblongata connects the brain with the spinal cord and contains sensory and motor nuclei for cranial nerves 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. It also contains reflex centers uh, like the cardiovascular centers to adjust heart rate and arteriolar di diameter and respiratory rhythmicity centers to regulate the respiratory rate. The cerebellum, as pictured here, is an automatic processing center which adjusts your postural muscles to help you maintain balance. It also programs and fine-tunes movements. 
um, disturbances of coordination is called ataxia, and this can sometimes be caused by damage to the cerebellum. So that brings us to the checkpoint for 8.7, and I have a couple of questions here for you, so you might want to pause the recording and see if you can answer these questions before you move on to the next section. The peripheral nervous system links the central nervous system to the rest of the body. All sensory information and motor commands are carried by axons of the peripheral nervous system. And these axons are bundled together and wrapped in connective tissue to form the peripheral nerves. We have 12 cranial nerves that originate from the brain, and they're noted as Roman numerals 1 through 12. And we also have spinal nerves that connect to the spinal cord. Some of these nerves are only motor pathways, some are only sensory pathways, and some are called mixed, which means that they have both sensory and motor neurons. The cell bodies of sensory and motor neurons are clustered together in masses called ganglia. So this next section, we're going to be looking at all 12 of these cranial nerves. And we're going to start at the beginning with the olfactory nerve number one. This is a sensory nerve that's connected to the cerebrum, and it carries information concerning the sense of smell. You'll notice that noted in this figure is also the olfactory tract. The optic nerves are cranial nerve number two. These are sensory nerves that carry visual information from the eyes through the optic foramina of the orbits to the optic chiasm, and they'll continue as optic tracts to the nuclei of the thalamus. The oculomotor nerve number three is motor only, and this arises in the midbrain. It innervates four of the six extrinsic eye muscles and the intrinsic eye muscles that control the size of the pupil of the eye. The trochlear nerves number four is the smallest. It also arises in the midbrain, and this is a motor only nerve. It innervates the superior oblique extrinsic muscles of the eye. The trigeminal nerve number five, cranial nerve five, have nuclei in the pons. They are the largest cranial nerves and they are mixed. The trigeminal nerve has three branches. The ophthalmic from the orbit, sinuses and nasal cavity, skin of the forehead, nose and eyes. The maxillary from the lower eyelid, upper lip, cheek, nose, upper gums and teeth and the mandibular, which comes from the salivary glands and the tongue. The abducens nerve is cranial nerve number six. Inner, it innervates only the lateral rectus extrinsic eye muscle. It's a motor only, and it has the nucleus in the palms. The facial nerves are mixed nerves, and they emerge from the palms. Sensory fibers monitor the proprioception in the face, and motor fibers provide facial expressions, control tear and salivary glands. The vestibulocochlear nerves, number eight, respond to sensory receptors in the inner ear. The nuclei are in the pons and medulla oblongata, and there's two components, as its name would suggest. The vestibular nerve conveys information about balance and position, and the cochlear nerve responds to sound waves for the sense of hearing. The glossopharyngeal nerve number nine is mixed nerves, innervating the tongue and the pharynx. Their nuclei are in the medulla oblongata. The sensory portion monitors taste on the posterior third of the tongue and monitors blood pressure and blood gases. The motor portion controls pharyngeal muscles used in swallowing and fibers to the salivary glands. The vagus nerve number 10 has sensory pathways for the ANS output to cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and digestive glands. Motor control includes the soft palate, pharynx, and esophagus. The accessory nerve 
number 11, um, are motor nerves, and they originate in the medulla oblongata. They similarly innervate muscles of the palate, pharynx, and larynx, sternocloidal mastoid, and the trape trapezius muscles as well. The hypoglossal nerves, which is number 12, provide voluntary motor control over the tongue. Those are the 12 cranial nerves. We have 31 pairs of spinal nerves, and they are grouped according to the region of the vertebral column from which they originate. And each pair of spinal nerves monitors a specific region of the body surface. And this is described or illustrated here as a dermatome. The distribution of the dermatomes on the surface of the skin is pictured here. Now, during development, skeletal muscles commonly fuse and they form larger muscles, but they're innervated by trunks or nerve plexuses. And these contain axons derived from several spinal nerves. The major nerve trunks of the peripheral nervous system are the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, and a combination of the lumbar and the sacral plexus, the lumbosacral plexus. So this picture displays the spinal nerve plexuses and their distribution of some of the major nerves. The cervical plexus innervates muscles of the head, neck, and the diaphragm. The brachial plexus innervates the shoulder girdle and the upper limb. And the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus innervate the pelvic girdle and the lower limb. These nerves contain sensory as well as motor fibers. We have eight pairs of cervical nerves, C1 through 8, 12 pairs of thoracic nerves, T1 through T12, five pairs of lumbar nerves, L1 through L5, five pairs of sacral nerves, and one pair of coccygeal nerves. And that brings us to another checkpoint where I have two questions for you. But I also want to challenge you to compose a mnemonic to help you remember the cranial nerves. Oftentimes the ones you make up yourself are the easiest ones to remember. 